Hi, I'm film editor Lawrence Jordan from Master the Workflow, and today we're talking with Amy Duddleston, ACE, editor of HBO's critically acclaimed series, Mayor of Easttown, starring Kate Winslet, along with an amazing cast of supporting players. Amy's been fortunate to work with some of film and television's most talented directors, and has built her reputation working in horror, comedy, and drama in both feature films and television. In this interview, we'll dig deep into Amy's experiences as a professional editor, from her early days as a film schlepper to one of the most in-demand editors working today. So let's get into it. Well, thank you, Amy, for being here with us. I really appreciate it. I know you're busy and uh, you've started a new show after Mayor of Easttown, and uh, we really appreciate you taking the time. No problem. Thank you for having me. So I want to start up by asking you, when did you decide you wanted to be an editor? I mean, was this something that you knew when you were a kid or college or? I was kind of a kid in college. I was like a freshman in college and uh, I was like 17 and I read this article. I was doing some research for a paper and I came across this article about this woman, Dee Dee Allen. And I was like, oh, and it was about her. It was in the New York Times Magazine in like 1980 something, probably like 1983 or something. And uh, it was about her editing Reds and maybe it was like 1982. And it was just the story of like how she works in the cutting room and who works with her. And it was like all these people like Richard Marks. And, and anyway, I just thought that sounds like the most interesting job in the world. Like I was already a movie fan and I already knew that like I enjoyed cinema. Like my mom was like huge. My parents loved movies. And so I grew up loving movies too, but I never thought like it's something you can work in. <laughs> so it was not like, Right. There are jobs. And um, and also, you know, when I was a kid, it was like there was a lot of guys. So you didn't know, like, directors were all men. And, and so for this article about this woman, it was kind of mind blowing. I was like, this is a job in cinema that a woman does. And I kind of followed through with that. Um, they didn't really have a film major at my college, but they had a film department, you know, where it was mostly like documentary. Um, but it was an art major, basically. You had to major in general fine art. So um, with my dad's blessing, sort of, I switched my major <laughs> from journalism um, to uh, art and I started studying film and um, it kind of took off from there. And so I really wanted to be an editor, yeah. Neat, that's, that's, a, that's a good story. Um, yeah, I actually, started with journalism and then switched to art history. But uh, See? Yeah, quickly took a uh, editing job when that kind of came up. But uh, yeah. OK, so you got into this art program and mm -hmm. you took some film classes. Um, mm -hmm. Do you yes. think? Well, it wasn't really film school, but, you know, was it helpful to your editing career? It was very helpful because I did get to make some 16 millimeter films and I did realize like editing is like the most fun process in all of this because I did not enjoy dealing with like, you know, the drama kids you had to recruit for your films. <laughs> and, um, just dealing with the camera and where to put it and the lights. Like it just, I mean, it was a lot of work and I just, as soon as I got to be in my room alone with the footage, that was when I had the most fun. Yeah. And then another experience I had, um, the, um, a film came to town. I, I grew up in Tucson, Arizona, and I ended up going to college there through the um, University of Arizona. And so they filmed Revenge of the Nerds on our campus. And I got a job in the editing room. Wow. As like this 18 year old kid, uh, and I got to watch Nancy Forner be the assistant editor for like three weeks. And uh, very cool. And she, you know, she taught me how to like make boxes. And I got to watch the editor, <laughs> Alan Balsam, like edit scenes. And I helped with dailies. Like I was like their schlepper. Right. You know, I couldn't do a bunch of stuff because it was a union show. So I was only allowed to do a few things. But um, 
You were a schlepper. Yeah, and, it was, and I was a schlepper. Making boxes. I'll, I'll have to do a cutaway yeah. to a trim box because everybody who watches this <laughs> will have no idea what you're talking about. What is she talking about? <laughs> yeah, making labels, making boxes, um, dragging all this stuff to dailies at night and bringing it back to the editing room. So it was great. And, and that was like my first professional experience. And that came very early. And I was really lucky. Um, to like learn all of that stuff uh, That's a and just know that this is what happens in an editing room. I know it's a struggle, like, like knowing that that's what happens just like made it so much easier. Especially back then because, start. Um, yeah. you know, yes, films went on location, but it, it, it just was yeah. tougher and, and to fewer. have that happen to me was kind of like this bizarre, it was kismet, yeah. like, or whatever you want to call it. It was meant to be. Auspicious. Um, Very cool. It was an auspicious beginning. Yeah. Okay. So you worked your way up. You got, obviously, into mm -hmm. the business. And then you started working with an editor, uh, Curtis Clayton, who um, yes. whose work I really admire and uh, <clears throat> loved, loved some of his earlier films that I remember well. Um, yes. And you, you continued to work with him on several films. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know, could you tell us about how someone develops a working relationship with an editor yeah. like that to, you know, which often leads to getting an opportunity to cut some scenes and things like that? Yes. Um, I would love to talk about that because Curtis was like a huge influence in my life. Um, I met him on a film called uh, A Rage in Harlem, where I kind of came in and helped organize a bunch of stuff that had been, you know, disorganized. And, uh, and he asked me to come on to my own private Idaho after that show. And that was like, sure, I would love to <laughs> live in Portland, Oregon for seven months in Gus Van Zandt's work house. Work with Gus Van Zandt, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. After Drugstore Cowboy, that oh. was, this was his next film. So um, it was a pretty incredible experience. And yeah, and Curtis and I went on after that for several films, and um, and he was really my mentor. I was so lucky to have him. Uh, I learned everything I've learned. I've basically learned from Curtis um, about editing, really. So, um, tell us about like how that worked. I mean, were you guys still back on film, or yeah? And and so, were you in the room with him, kind of handing him trims and things like that? I wasn't so much in the room because he was, he's a very, he works very independently, you know, because he was an independent filmmaker and he was usually like, he, you get one assistant if you're lucky. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, somebody had to sync the dailies and it was usually me and somebody that you got to work for free. Um, but uh, you were lucky if you got an apprentice. Um, so I was always there, like helping him, like if he needed something. I was always like around the corner or through the doorway, you know, where he could just call. And so I was, I was privy to like all of his conversations with Gus and other directors. And I just got to absorb everything that way. And I try to do that now with my own assistants and bring them into the room, which is really hard on television because it's so fast. Sometimes they don't, you know, they have 9 million things to do. And, um, and they're, and they're busy. And they don't yeah, sit with I you mean... as much. The, busy all the time. Uh, we talk about this yeah. a lot in our course, uh, which, you know, trains assistants, uh, you, yeah. you know, the, the, the workload, you know, assistants have become a lot more siloed because the workload is so intense and data yeah. and metadata intense. It's, it's a totally different animal now. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's so different yeah. from when I came up. Yeah, so, me too. Um, but did you, um, did he like, play scenes for you and maybe did you chat about always he always played like he would ask opinions he would show me you know all the scenes after he finished and he was like what and i would you know sometimes bravely <laughs> give my you know, two cents but he would let me cut scenes and that was the thing like i learned everything he was like no go back fine you know because we you know i watched the dailies we'd always watch the dailies together because back in the day, that's what you did. And then um, and he was, he'd be like, I remember this one thing from dailies and she was really funny and you should like go back and find that thing. Um, so he was just really helpful and just 
one thing I've always learned from Curtis, it's like you always have to look for the little things. It's like the little things are the thing that make a scene really special. And so I'm always looking for the little thing, you know, that a character does, like an actor just has. And uh, I, I was very lucky to have my um, mentor, Curtis. That's so nice. And, you know, it's nice that yeah. you do it with your assistance because I, I do the I same do. Thing. I try as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know. Because it was just um, the way we were How raised. are they going to learn? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, um, you, you know, let's face it. That was how assistants learned how to edit from the yeah. time, you know, films started to be made. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, exactly. it's harder now. So I try to make that extra effort to say, hey, if you want to cut a scene, you know, you got to do it on your own time, yeah. but, you know, I'll, I'll work with you on it. And, you know, because that's the only way they're going to really learn. Yeah, it's the only way they're going to learn. Yeah. So, um, so during the pandemic, it was a little tricky having assistants in the room. But then like Evercast was kind of great because they could all just pile in the room and like turn their camera off and you know, turn their microphone off. And they were just, just sitting there lurking and nobody cared, you know. And then when you needed something, they were there. So they were doing their work in the background. And it was kind of great. <laughs> they would like, I would get a text message from, you know. <laughs> one of them or something in the chat and it was it was kind of great yeah um, it's interesting how but work from home is going to change how we work in subtle ways like that you know yeah and uh i, I really interesting yeah i don't think it's going away i mean obviously no. we'll we'll be back in the cutting room with directors no it had already this. started but yeah yeah yeah, it's uh... because, you know, a lot of directors just go on to the next thing, especially in television. And so um, I work with a lot of directors remotely anyway. So I was already like primed for working remotely. That wasn't really a problem. It was just having the whole system that was, you know, that that was the tricky part. Um, and doing it from your house is like really invasive. So. <laughs> Especially when, you know, it's like I live in a 1,500 square foot apartment with, you know, t two other people. Yeah. And a cat. <laughs> so, and two cats. Two cats. <laughs> and neighbors. And, yeah. you know, so, yeah. Ah, we, adapt or die is I know. one of the original editing <laughs> uh, sayings that I got used to very early on. It's very true, though. Yeah, yeah. So on your way up, you cut a few shorts. Um, did you mm -hmm. consciously go after these things? And how did that help you develop as an editor? Um, well, I actively went after shorts um, because I knew that like, this was just gonna help me become an editor. I, I you know, so it, it's like, it's very rare when one gets recognized. I mean, you know, um, Tom Cross can tell you like, <laughs> about how lucky he was you know, with a short film called Whiplash. But, um, <laughs> but that's, you know, that's lightning in a, that strikes once, you know. Um, yeah, but you worked with Lisa Cholodenko. Who... It's true. I worked with Lisa Cholodenko, but like Lisa was an assistant editor who worked across the hall from me. Wow. So it was like, yeah, that was how we met. Um, and she said, you know, one day I'm going to direct a film. And I was like, ooh, can I be the editor? <laughs> you know? And I mean, really, that's how our friendship started. Oh, that's awesome. So I know. But, like, that's what you have to do. Yeah. It's, it's You have to, like, find those people that want to make movies. And you have to, you know, you don't stalk them. But you just no. remind them that you're there. And you're still willing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because my thing with Lisa turned into something bigger. It's like you never know. Yeah. Um, yeah, like with Tom Cross, it just like they're like, "Well, what if we made this into a feature?" Yeah. It's, right. it's like, yeah. And plus, you, know? you just develop your skills. I mean, like exactly to just keep working. You know, that's one of the hardest things for us as freelancers. Is you know, you maybe finish a big gig and you're tired and yeah, you take some time off, yeah. but you got to get back into it pretty quick because you just want to, especially early on, I think, you know, that's the way it was yeah. for me. You just want to keep working yeah. and doing stuff. And, uh, and shorts are great. It's, it, it's there, there will always be shorts. Yeah. And especially when digital technology took over, it was like, 
that was awesome because now it's like it wasn't going to cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just to you know shoot on film right um that was huge so there's always there, you know there's probably no shortage of short films to cut still um it's great practice so you've worked in both films features and television uh yes tell us the difference for you the difference for me well television kind of happened when in 2018 you know when the market crashed and uh, you know the recession started and they stopped making movies that were you know 15 to 20 million dollar budget films which is what i was editing at the time and television kind of became this thing for me to kind of it saved me basically um you know, and it saved filmmakers too, because they realized, well, this is where I'm going to be able to work. So I've worked with like a bunch of people like Mary Heron and like all of these people that needed to keep working. Um, so the first thing that, I mean, the first television job I ever worked on was an HBO show and they're just very different than like network television. So my first network television show was um, The Killing for AMC and even though it's cable, it was still like, you know, there were act breaks and the pace was very fast. And I was, it was shocking. <laughs> and, um, so just learning how to keep up and, and you know, you, you just can't be as slow as you can be in features and like, you know, watch the dailies and cut a scene a day or whatever. Um, you just don't have as much time. So that was the first uh, shocking thing to me. But um, after a while, I kind of liked it because you really have to think on your toes. You have to keep moving past the one idea you have and kind of move on to the next thing. So I I have a lot of you know versions of things that I'll just like throw in pieces. Like, well, there's that idea, but what if I did this? You know, just quickly have a bunch of sketches in a bin. Um, so that yeah a similar thing for That's me was you know my first real big editing gig was the first season of nypd blue and you know my background as an assistant and an associate editor was in features right and actually yeah. quite a few big features and when i got thrown into that and it was that you know shooting eight day schedule cutting for three weeks turning over finishing boom, you're right into a next one. I mean, I really felt it was like working out. I, I completely yeah. believe that I hone my chops in television because of the workflow and the speed that yeah. you mentioned. Yeah, I do feel like um, it's really helped me as an editor. I do feel that. Um, I don't know why people in features still look down on people in television. I have no idea. Um, well, that's crazy. It's much harder. <laughs> I mean, today that's crazy because, I mean, for example, the show you're working is uh, working yes. on or just finished is with one of the, you know, the premier actresses of our time and all yes. of the big directors are working. And I mean, because yeah. there's been this shift. Now it's a little, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's a shift. whereas it used to just be HBO was where the quality television yeah. was. Now it's everywhere. Yeah. And it's also where the majority of the, the work is. Yeah, it is. It is. I hope you're enjoying this interview as much as I did doing it. If you want to see more content about the nuts and bolts of film and television post-production, help us out by subscribing and hitting that like button. And check out our other social channels. Links are in the description below. Now back to our interview. So let's talk a little bit about Mayor of East Town um, for HBO. Yep. How did that job come about? You know, um, I have some friends who work at HBO in post um, and they kind of brought me in for a general meeting to kind of like, oh, Amy, we'd like to bring you back into the fold because you've been gone so long. And I'm like, wow, thank you. Um, and they told me about a bunch of shows that were coming up and they were like, you know, we have Lovecraft Country, which is this crazy, you know, science fiction uh, thing. And then we have Perry Mason, this redo. Um, it's really dark and interesting. And then we have this thing, mayor of East Town. And I thought they were saying the mayor of East Town, like everybody thinks. And, um, <laughs> but Kate Winslet's in it and she plays this detective. And I was like, really, what's that? Like, when does that start? And that actually 
I was like, well, I'd be interested in that. Um, I was just about to start working on hunters, you know, for Amazon. And so the schedule would have like worked out fine and everything. So I just kind of um, kept up with it through my agent and with Jenna at HBO. Um, you know, I mean, it wasn't like fait accompli. It was like the director still had to meet me and and all of that. Um, How was that? But How was that first meeting with the director? And Well, the first meeting, because there was a different director mm. at the beginning. Mm. Um, but he brought me on. So, um, and then when Craig Zobel took over, I knew Craig from American Gods. So he had done an episode of American Gods and we just, he ate lunch with the crew every day and, and we got chatty. And so I kind of knew him from that. And I was like, well, phew, at least I know Craig Zobel. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, it was. It's like, get chatty with the director at lunchtime is a good, uh, you know, even though he's not on your episode. Um, so that, you know, I, I, just kind of followed through up on Mayor of Easttown and reminded them that I was still interested. And, and, and they brought me in with the director for an interview and he did hire me. And there was another editor um, on the show too. Um, and when Craig Zobel took over, it was like, and then like the pandemic hit, Craig just asked me to take over the whole show. So the other editor was let go and I took over all of the episodes. Um, and they had shot, they had shot starting, um, October, 2019. So it was already March, you know, 2020 and it was cross boarded, you know, all seven episodes had been shooting all at once. Um, and when I took it over, most of the episodes were kind of, some were like three quarters finished, some were half finished. Maybe episode seven was like, like almost half finished, not quite. So it was, um, it was super challenging. So I re-edited all the episodes over this six month period. We kept thinking, well, when we come back to shooting and you know, it just kept getting pushed and pushed. And finally at the end of September, 2020, um, they went back into production. And I had gone through all the episodes with the director and the producer, so we'd done like, a really great like first pass like the scripts got revised like we were able to see kind of like what we needed and what you know maybe we need this and and oh, that's a real, maybe we don't need that that's a real luxury nice yeah it was super luxurious i mean that's you know um the way i was able to do it because uh it's a lot of work editing an entire show oh, yeah. and even when daily started i had to bring another person on to help me because i was still doing these cuts with the producer um a director ish and uh and naomi filaramo who came on to help me she just did the dailies while i was still doing stuff and then i jumped in and started doing dailies with her wow so they were checkerboarding so they weren't really shooting like an eight day schedule per episode or a 14. No, they were just shooting. Oh no, no, no. They were just shooting. Like if they were, you know, they built stages in outside Philadelphia, they were shooting in Delaware County. I mean, like where the show takes place. I mean, that was the thing. And there is a studio there. There's like two big stages. Um, it's in an, an industrial park <laughs> in Aston, Pennsylvania. Um, and so on the stages, you know, they built Mayor's house. And so before the pandemic, they had shot all of the scenes in Mayor's house for all of the episodes. And then they were about to build the police station. I mean, um, what did they have? There were three more weeks before the pandemic that Kate Winslet was going to shoot. And uh, it was, uh, and then it shut down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. <laughs> But it was supposed to go on, you know, we had all the scenes in the police station and all of this stuff, it, you know, I mean, yeah. there was still a lot left to do. How do you um, feel about checkerboarding? Do you think, does it kind of freak you out? I kind of like it. I'm used to it now. Yeah. I mean, the show I'm on now is doing it to over six episodes and there's one director. When there's one director, it's kind of great. Yeah. Um, it's become incredibly more, common. It's, it's a, yeah. If there's block shooting, it's just, it's kind of great. Yeah to be able to work on two episodes at once and then 
you're like, okay, well, sure. I mean, I'm kind of used to it now. Yeah. I'm, out of, I'm um, out of this scene or this location. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Time to move to the other thing. And I had done it on this other show um, several years back where they shot in New York and then they shot in Morocco. And so it was like the director had to move to the other location and then the new director would come up to New York and shoot those seeds and then they would all move to it was crazy. So um yeah. So in your opinion, what's the most technically challenging thing about editing Mayor of East Town? Um technically at first it was just kind of keeping track of like where what episode am I in? Like <laughs> Like that's also creatively, it was kind of like, where am I in the story? Um, just and then like late, technically, technically, um, later during the pandemic, doing everything like via Evercast, like doing director's cuts and producer's cuts for seven episodes um, in my dining room. I mean, that was the most technically challenging thing, but creatively and technically, I think with cross boarding that many episodes, it was kind of tricky. Like, where, where are we in the story? <laughs> like, I didn't have room to put up scene cards and like flipping through uh, continuity. It was kind of tricky. I was like, wait, when does this happen? Um, that was tricky. That was the most, because it was seven episodes and I was in charge of most of them. And yeah, right. so. Was... Right. And, and what about creatively? I mean, you have a plethora of the most amazing performances in that show. Yes. And I just watched episode six last night and can't wait to see episode. It's episode. another wowza, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so creatively, creatively yeah. How do you, it's, a, it's a, I mean, an abundance of riches. It is. I was like never at a loss for a great performance ever like Jean smart like nothing oh my god she's bad. so good and and you know ch and choices and things that you would get um kate winslet you just kind of follow her lead i mean really you know yeah it's like the first take is always great you know she'll do some really interesting things and it's like i just remember those things that i learned from curtis it's just like we'll just see what she does you know watch out for the little things because she's super smart and she knows what the hell she's doing and she knows this character better than anybody. So she's going to do some crazy shit, you know, whether it's like with her vape pen or whatever. <laughs> and she does some crazy shit. The with Wawa coffee. <laughs> yeah. She does. Man. Isn't it? Where she uses it like angrily and yeah. Doesn't it make the job like for me, when you're working with performances at that level, it makes the job so satisfying and fulfilling. Oh my God. And frankly, I mean, harder in it's terms easy. of there's so many choices, but easier That's in terms That's the hardest of, part. Yeah, but easier in terms like, yeah. you kind of can't go wrong. Yeah. No. Yeah. And of course, if somebody had their a scene with her, they always brought their A game. So that always made it like, I bet. those kids were never mumbly. Those kids, like, they were only mumbly when they were with each other. But if they were with Kate Winslet, it's like, <laughs> everybody was, like, sitting up Don't straight. screw around. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> okay, so getting back to your career, you've cut comedy, mm. quite a bit of comedy, and drama. Do you ever mm -hmm. feel like you're being, or have you ever felt like you've been pigeonholed in one or the other? Oh, for sure. Yeah, how do you avoid yeah. that? Um, you know, you try to feel like, as soon as you start feeling pigeonholed, you just, I mean, luckily I have a good agent and I can say, please pull me out of the serial killer, um, Run. <laughs> genre that I seem to be falling into um, <laughs> while I do enjoy it. And I'm working on a serial killer show right now. It's kind of like, um, but yeah, it's, it's challenging. It's really, I mean, it's really fun, you know, doing scares and things like that. But yeah, it, it's like having a show like Vita, which combined comedy and drama, that was like a dream because you could do like hilarious things and then it would get like super weepy between the sisters. And I just loved that show so much. It was, working on that show was a joy. Um, and I feel so lucky to have had that experience because it was like the best of both worlds where, you know, 
and everybody was great and and the characters were so awesome and the and it was you know and it took place in LA and it was it was a really fun show to work on but that yeah you do get pigeonholed it's like I'm the drama person it's like if you need somebody to have you know two people in a room talking it's like call me <laughs> but it's <laughs> <laughs> but that was like you know working on a show like american gods was insane i mean that was a life-changing experience for me too mm. because uh i had never worked in like a fantasy realm and i was like i don't know if i can do this this is so weird and a lot of um there was a lot of anxiety you know on that show just i mean the schedule was crazy and we never knew like what you know, to expect, but some of it was so freeing in terms of just like Brian Fuller is sitting behind you, like thinking of stuff to just do. <laughs> and um, you're like, oh my God, he's like, no, don't worry about that. The sky's going to be purple. <laughs> and don't, you know, don't worry about that. The moon is going to turn into a dollar and you're, he's going to pull it from the, she's going to pull it out from the sky. Uh, <laughs> I love writers when they that kind of stuff. And it's he's like... going to have it in his pocket. They've got all the answers. Like, okay. Like, <laughs> Thank God somebody knows what's Perfect. going on here. <laughs> Thank God. You know, but he'd just sit there and go, well, what if a wolf showed up? And like my assistant would like go to YouTube and like look for st like stock footage of a wolf like in a road. You know? <laughs> I love that. That's crazy. Getty images. Hey, look, it's a wolf. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. So we're training people to be feature film and television assistant editors in our, you know, primary course. What advice do you have for people who are kind of just getting started? Meeting people is like one of the most important things in your career. It's like knowing people. It's, it's just networking and knowing other people because it's how you're going to get jobs. It's just, um, more important, like doing the work and making sure that you do the work well is really important, but knowing people and learning from people is really just the key. I mean, we still talk about it like, you know, in ACE meetings, it's like getting members to meet other members and, and at the union, it's constantly, you know, please come to this mixer, please, you know, Putting yourself <laughs> it's out really there. important. Yeah. You have to put yourself out there. Yeah. Um, and it's hard because a lot of editors I mean, I, I, yeah. are thought of as introverts and maybe are introverts. Yes, it's true. And they are. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my old assistants, I'm like, you have to get out and you have to meet more people. Good you advice. have to get a little active because it's how your career is just going to like, if I hadn't chatted up Lisa Cholodenko across the hall, like what what would have happened in my life? I have no idea. Right. You know, if I hadn't chatted up somebody who worked with Curtis before, like what would have happened? You know, right. I don't know. Right. And what about for people, you know, because we're getting a lot more people who want to be filmmakers because there's so much yeah. work, there's so much content. And, you know, kids today are brought up with a media literacy that, you know, it's just crazy. dwarfs what even, you know, people like us know. So if they want to get their foot in the door of just the industry, you know, they want to be yeah. editors, let's say, do you have any advice for, I mean, can you go back in time and sort of think like, how would you do that today? You know, I mean, I started out as a schlepper. I just, I do feel like there is, you know, the level where you got to get in and just um, to meet people you 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 know you're not born an editor it's like i know you can do like all these cool things on on TikTok with doing stuff but it's like if you really want to do this as a career you know you got to come up with something that's your day job <laughs> and, and so editors edit i mean all these kids that you know can edit like these really amazing things on on TikTok, I, I, a lot of it's directing too. It's just like knowing how that technology works for you is an amazing thing, but it's like, it's not like in an editing room working with a director or, right. or being that director working with other people. 
I mean, that's another thing too, Teams. because it is still a collaboration, right? It is a collaboration. And so working with other people is really important, right? So learning how to work with other people is essential for long and hours, I do feel that, for you know, long periods of time. For, <laughs> <laughs> for 18 <laughs> months, I worked on Mayor of Easttown. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, with 18 the pandemic. months because of the pandemic, wow. but like, good gig. You know, yeah, it was an awesome gig. I'm, I'm forever grateful. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> that so, I had that during that time. So what's next? Um, you said you're working for another big streamer. I'm. I won't mention the name unless. Uh, yeah, Apple TV. Oh, it's Apple TV. Very impressive. And it's a show, um, that Taryn Edgerton is in, and Ray Liotta, and Greg Kinnear, and Paul Walter Hauser. Cool. And it takes place in the '90s, and it's like a serial killer kind of thriller intense and cool when um, we start it is that? it's probably next year i can't it's not going to be done yeah till then but yeah january february and and mayor of east town is finished it was a limited series right next week next. yeah it's done unless you know <laughs> kate winslet thinks she wants to be mayor of east town again um <laughs> and there are plenty of people who want to watch her yeah. eat hoagies and Drink Rolling Rock. Oh, but, I, you know. I, I love these limited series that HBO is doing. I mean, the ones you mentioned, Perry Mason, big fan. Yeah. Uh, you know, this but one. That's coming back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's... Perry Mason's coming back with a new showrunner. Yeah. Yeah. There's tons, tons um, of material to go. I mean, y you know, but uh, I interviewed Simon Smith, who did Chernobyl. I, yeah. I, that was, you know, mind blowing. And yeah. That was a mind blowing show. Yeah. So cool. Cool. Well, listen, Amy, I appreciate yeah. you taking the time. I know you're working. Oh, for sure. The community appreciates it. And uh, you're doing a lot for uh, aspiring editors. Well, thank you. Yeah. I hope, you know, it's just find a mentor if you can. I mean, I know it's really hard. And I try to be a good mentor as much as I can. Um, but it's, it's really important. I just feel like, and, and, and like I said, it's like finding a group of people right. that you can collaborate with is the key because you know, it's a collaboration. Yeah. It's like, if you want to do it by yourself, that's fine. But like, you know, yeah. where's the fun in that? <laughs> lonely, man. <laughs> it's lonely. It's lonely in there. Thank you again. Thank you, Larry. 